How can you be a sex positive parent and deal with porn? I'm Kathy Virtually from TheIntimacyDojo.com and I'm here with Jet Setting Jasmine from JetSetJasmine.com and King Noir from KingNoirXXX.com. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. So this, this year at Woodhull Sexual Freedom Summit, you're going to be talking about porn and parents, sex positive parenting. And I'm really curious, like what topics are, it's a, it's a very, I know there's a lot of feelings people have about whether, how do you deal with that? And what, so how are you going to address that? So one of the most important things for us is to really just normalize um, that it's our job, it's the work that we do, yes. and just like any other um, industry or form of work, we have responsibilities outside of that work, and part yeah. of that is raising our family yeah. um, and providing for our family. So the first thing is just to kind of normalize um, sex work. I think that's the number one thing, is that it is work, it provides for our family, yeah. but at the same time, we bring a set of values and ethics into our household. Um, that allow us to do our work and also be great parents to our children. I love Anything. that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's also important whether it's work or not. You know, sex is a natural part of life. It really is. And everybody has, on some form of the spectrum, sexuality from asexuality to bisexuality, straight, LGBTQ, whatever it is. We all have uh, something about us. Uh, sexually, that's how we express who we are, and it's important for it to be normalized in everybody's lives instead of shame. Oh, yeah, I love that. I love that you're out there showing people that we can enjoy our bodies and different ways we can enjoy our bodies because I was brought up in a very conservative family. We didn't know about things like, uh, to me, like I'd heard about porn until I was in college. Like, it was scary. Like, if you watched porn, you suddenly became this deviant person. And yeah. I watched it finally with my first boyfriend. I'm like, this is hot. This is fun. I don't feel like a deviant. I feel, well, maybe, but, um, and I think it is important to like, children are sexual beings too. We can be age appropriate, but they're discovering themselves. They're, they have questions and to kind of whitewash everything and say children are not curious. We should not ever talk about anything or their parents, um, if, I mean, even uh, uh, TV movie stars do very um, explicit scenes sometimes, and they'll talk about how they won't take their children to go see them. Like there's a, there may be a boundary, but um, have you had people question your your parenting style with uh, with your jobs? Sure, um, absolutely. Um, I think that the idea of like you know, um, it's hard for people to separate. Um, our work from our family life and I mean that's really not the, the same way we don't bring our work home and you know watch it over dinner <laughs> <laughs> it's the same way that we don't sh share our family in our work setting mm -hmm. so I think it's hard for people to sometimes conceptualize that you know we eat dinner together we discipline our children like you know just regular normal family things um, most people don't come home and talk about the intricacies of their work with their children, yeah. you know? Um, and so, you know, we don't either. And if it's not age appropriate, we're not having those kind of discussions at home. So yeah, people have certainly placed judgment and most of that is because they just can't conceptualize someone who's in the adult industry being a full human being. Yeah, yeah that's, it's really sad how objectified. It's, and it's somehow, because again, I watch plenty of commercial movies that are not not considered porn but there's very explicit scenes in there and like where's the line like if if one of the big movie companies do it it's okay but if somehow if it's porn it becomes illicit somehow um and people become immediately objectified as very shallow and just in that niche mm -hmm. um, well i think people are objectified in motion pictures as well um the non the non-porn cinema as well depending on what kind of films they do That's you know I, I think um especially when it comes to women in general no yeah. matter what a woman is doing whether it be on screen off screen there's a certain objectification and ownership that men take over in regards to women's bodies so i think when it comes to porn being that everything is shown and so many different kinds of things are done then you know, going along what, especially what men are told about women their entire lives, it becomes like, oh, well, if she does that, then I don't have to respect her anymore, mm -hmm. you know? So there's yeah. this 
whole perception. You know, men already have a certain, it's like scales. They already have women on a lower scale of respect. And then if women are doing or showing something else, then it keeps like going down on their pecking order. Yeah, it's really, it's, and I, I would guess that for people of color, that's even more so. And it's, it's, it's so frustrating and, and it's hard to counter that because there's so many people entrenched in those beliefs. Yeah, and speaking of what people of color, and that's one of the one of the other things that we've been touring about is the uniqueness of um, of how people of color are represented in the adult industry. So that can make it even more challenging because not only um, do we have to kind of confront just people's ideas around sex and sexuality, but there's also this perception of people of color and um, within the industry that is kind of has a double layer of negative stereotypes. Mm-hmm. So um, it's kind of a, a lot to kind of come up under, and then on top of that, you know, we're trying to um, demonstrate that we're not just these, well, we're not these stereotypes that are perpetuated in mainstream media or the adult entertainment, but on top of that, that we are also, again, full human beings mm-hmm. um, and enjoy the spectrum of life, including raising children, um, enjoying our families, enjoying other hobbies other than um, sex and <laughs> filming. <laughs> um, what are some of the stereotypes people of color run into? Um, if someone's watching, like they may not be as aware. What what stereotypes do you run into when you're in the porn industry? Well, I, th- I think number one, people are, and this and this goes even without porn, just um, that we actually own our company. Yeah. <laughs> That's you wonderful. Know. Yes, you're allowed people, to do that. People, I'm sorry, say what you... I said you're allowed to... Like, that's okay. No, just say it's... it's, The people would be surprised is frustrating. Sorry. I was being sarcastic. No, absolutely. I mean, we we also uh, own a gym. And there have been times when people have come into our gym and and basically are asking us where the owners are. (laughs) Or... (laughs) Even after we've introduced ourselves. And have introduced ourselves (laughs) as much. Oh, um, they like can't hear it because it doesn't fit in their paradigm. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, so when it comes to the adult entertainment industry and and being a, a person of color, then also it's uh, you have to fit into their certain like, hey, we want to shoot this scene with you, so you know, we want you to play a thug, or mm-hmm. you know, it. it they don't have a lot of scenes where you'll see two people of color in a romantic, passionate, sensual scene. It always has to be vulgar or abusive. Mm-hmm. Um, being that I'm a, a lighter skin tone, those I've been told at certain times like, uh, you're not black enough. And I usually ask them to then tell that to the police when yeah. they're pulling me over, you know, like I'm black enough then. But you know, it's it's just all these particular perceptions of what blackness is supposed to be or how it's supposed to be portrayed that we run into constantly. Uh, For black women, it's usually has to be subservient and completely disrespected. You know, the hip hop, hip hop perspective, like you have to be twerking at all times. You know, like, yeah, you're you're a lawyer in a law firm setting, but just twerk right now Mm -hmm. and we're going to pour oil all over you. You know what I'm saying? it's consistent, consistently degraded. Or e- even the um, the descriptions of our bodies. Uh, we can be standing right next to our white counterparts, and um, they're still going to apply a certain label, like big black cop, to uh, um, to a black male, can and have the exact same anatomy as you know the white doctor who comes home and makes love to his wife. You know, the, the the labeling is very different. And the same thing for women. I mean, I feel like if I did a film and I have a pretty average, well, when I'm not pregnant, average size body, and it'll be like, you know, um, I don't know, black beauty with big tits and ass, standing next to someone who has, you know, just by measurement standards, a, a larger anatomy than me. And the, the labeling will be completely different. And people of color really don't have, and I'll say all, all performers don't have the liberty of um, of being a part of the conversation of how they're labeled in films. So you know you can go in, do your best work, and then come out and see yourself on a label like all 
uh, what is it like Black Lives Matter or yeah. some, making some type of mockery of um, things that are incredibly important and sensitive in our community. So that's why we own our own company. <laughs> I mean, there's recently been a company that shoots a series of white uh, female police officers mm -hmm. throwing black males over cop cars and kind of having their way with them or having them have to fuck their way out of a situation. Mm -hmm. you know, which is completely oblivious and disrespectful to the people who have been being murdered and abused by police officers and what even started the Black Lives Matter movement, you know. Yeah, I'm all for people exploring different kinks and, and ideas, but that one is like, no, that's, there's, it's, this is, this is something that people of color are facing every day and their lives are being taken. We cannot make that trivial. We can't make that something to just entertain us a little bit. Right, right. Oh. Yeah, I, I agree with you. There's certainly a place and space for cop fantasies and power dynamics yeah. and things of that sort. But when the timing and the labeling and the words and the gestures are, are so close to what, you know, it's like you don't know if you're watching porn or, or the news. Yeah. Then um, it becomes a quite disrespectful. Wow. Um, I really appreciate you being out there and, and doing this work and helping change the industry. I'm, just being more aware is really powerful for people and you're very eloquent about this. Um, for when I'm, I'm not a parent myself, so I may not be the best person to interview about being the, the parent side of it. Um, I, I enjoy them in short periods and then give them back to their parents. Um, <laughs> usually they've learned a bad word or two, so I'm not I'm not asked to that. <laughs> Um, so do your kids ever ask you about what your job is and what do you say if you want to share? Sure. Um, so they didn't have to ask. This is something that is, this is a part of sex positive parenting in our opinion is that the conversation about sex, sexuality, um, different stages of sex and sexuality is something that you discuss along the continuum, no matter what age your children are. And again, of course, in an age appropriate way. So um, when King and I first started working together, we were not doing film work. We were doing um, like parties and, and a lot of sex education at the time together. So, um, so I told my girls at that time, and they were, I think, eight and, eight and 12 or something like that. They're about eight and 12. Um, at that time, you know, that we were doing parties to help people, help at the time, women primarily, feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it went to um, that bag in the corner is my adult bag, and it has adult toys in there. Uh, so, and I'm sure they went in the went in the bag. <laughs> well, I, would, I mean, if I was a kid, I'd be like, "What? What are adult toys?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are adult toys? Um, and it wasn't that you know it was hidden or it was locked away or anything like that. It was just making the distinction that there are toys for adults and that's my bag and respect my my property like I respect yours mm -hmm. and you know the same thing if you look you will find like we all did with our parents probably their porn stashes or their exactly like my dad's toys. playboy <laughs> right like... exactly and um but I didn't put any shame I wasn't ashamed of it so hiding it was was it was important for me not to hide it but not to have it in plain view yeah. you know yeah so um so that was kind of our first set of conversations. And then I think I started doing some um, like sexy pictures for branding and things of that sort. And the ones that were a little bit more, um, like the ones that you could probably post on Facebook and Instagram, so that level of appropriateness, yeah. I would show them. Like, wow, you know, look guys, this picture, I'm, I'm so happy with how this picture came out. Um, and my little one would be like, ew, you don't have any clothes on. Oh. And, <laughs> And the older one would say, like, that looks really good, but you should have pointed your toe a little bit more, something <laughs> along those lines. But again, this is me um, showing them confidence in my body and what I was comfortable with sharing. It wasn't like, now that I take nude pictures, you should too. It was, this is, this is what, what level of comfort I am in my body. Uh, and then when we got into the film, the film aspect of things, King and I had an opportunity to talk to them about, we started actually with social media and saying, we want to block you guys from our social media because we're gonna start putting some things out on the internet that are not age appropriate. I really love that you, you know? just told them. It wasn't like, we're gonna hide it. The kids figure stuff out. They're like, 
Exactly. Yeah. Or, um, you know, we would say very openly, like, we have a shoot today. And they would be like, um, I don't know, like, what kind of shoot? And we're like, oh, a video shoot. And they already knew. I mean, I, they, like you said, kids figure things out. They learned about explicit material and things like that. Um, unfortunately, and this is kind of the point that we're trying to make to parents, before we had an opportunity, because if they're on the TV, if they can see pop-ups on their tablets, Yes. They're already exposed to things that you don't want them to be exposed to, unfortunately. Yeah, far less positive um, than what you're sharing with them. It's like, some yeah. of it's very uh, dehumanizing. It really is. And, you know, I kind of feel like, to a certain degree, I came, um, approached them. I was kind of behind the eight ball already. I was sharing with them, you know, my experience. But my oldest one had already found um, porn on, on her mm. tablet. So on her, you know, whatever device she was using yeah. at the time. Um, and we had a talk at that point in time. This is before I was even in the industry. So um, really we didn't have to, they didn't have to ask us questions. They didn't learn about it from anyone at school bullying them. They were completely aware and able to defend um, our family in the way that they, they saw fit. Um, thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, why did you choose Woodhull as your venue to share this this time? Um, I, I love the Woodhull Sexual Freedom Summit. Obviously I'm doing the interviews. But what do you and what drew you to that summit for this? Well, this year, what drew us there was the last time we were there, which I think was yeah. two years ago. Two now. years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we did our presentation on being black in the adult entertainment industry, and it was one of our first mm -hmm. larger events where we actually gave that gave that talk. It might have been the first. I think so. And. Everybody who was there had really great feedback. Uh, it led to some really great conversations. Mm -hmm. And the other people that were presenting, the topics they were presenting on, and it, it just was, it was like a very uh, a intellectual, uh, uh, intellectual and open way to, to speak about sex with people who are also interested in doing the same. Yeah. And... With, with this presentation, I think it, it, for us, it was just like, we have to go to Woodhall with it because it's, uh, it's gonna be a place where it's gonna be received and spread and mm -hmm. shared and talked about. And a great way for us, like that saying, where steel sharpens steel. Mm -hmm. So we'll be speaking to people who are also giving presentations on sex positivity and just, approaching sex in a way that that isn't shameful to be able to be like well this is what we're thinking this is what we're sharing this is what we're building on and other people will be able to receive it and sharpen up with us i love that um if someone said was talking to you and said i don't know if i should go to woodhall i might be too new to the industry or i'm kind of shy what would you recommend go to woodhall <laughs> <laughs> don't don't be shy i mean if you don't want to speak you know, nobody there will force you to speak. I think all of the, uh, everything there is not just presented, but uh, experienced in the way that you would want to talk about sex. You know, no one's going to force you mm -hmm. to speak on anything you don't yeah. want to speak on. No one's going to force you to sit in a presentation you don't want to be at. And if you do have a question, no one's going to uh, belittle you or shame you for that yeah. question. Um, everyone there is is pretty open to sharing their expertise and also people there who are experts are also open to being uh, students as well yeah. so it's a very um, it's a very comfortable environment like I, I think it's it's more uh, it's more comfortable than if you just walked up to the wrong person at the wrong time and asked the question you know it's like you're gonna ask the right question to the right person if you're there right yeah it's a really warm place um i really appreciate you being here um jasmine and and, and um king do you have any just last tips for someone if someone is struggling with parenting and porn like do you have some places a book or a reference you could send them to so um Really, unfortunately, no. Um, and I, I don't want to say that this is new or groundbreaking work. 
Um, I think that people have tried to incorporate sex positive parenting specifically about being in the adult industry and parenting, mm -hmm. but there isn't a great deal of information that's out there, mm -hmm. which is kind of why um, why we're doing the work that we're doing. But um, King and I do offer consultation. Oh, nice. So yeah, we have worked with um, with lots of parents and couples, and you know even um, even just people that are not in the industry but want to explore their sexuality but kind of have a barrier because they feel that once they're a parent, this other side of them completely shuts off. So, um, and that to me is also a part of sex positive parenting. How are you empowering yourself sexually as a full being while being a parent, you know, and what are you not giving to your child by exploring that aspect of yourself? Yeah, that full role modeling, you get to be a full person is amazing. It, it is, and that way you don't have to, you know, be a 30-something, 40-something year old um, struggling to find answers about sex and sexuality. There's all too many of them out yeah. there. Yeah. So, if so people... yeah, King and I do, we do um, work, private work with clients, and um, for those that have some, uh, some kind of maybe, you know, deeper, deep-seated issues, maybe some value issues around sex and parenting, um, or even sex and trauma and parenting or children experiencing trauma. Um, we also offer a full service therapy, um, virtual therapy service through Blue Pearl Therapy, in which I am the lead therapist there. Wonderful. That's, that's fabulous. So they can find you at jet set, jetsettingjasmine.com and kingnoirxxx.com. Thank you so much, both of you, for doing this today. I really appreciate everything you shared. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You for having us.